Hey, welcome back. In this uh, video, I want to talk about the resonator of Bitwig Studio. And it's a pretty simple device. It's actually like an EQ, but you can do a lot of stuff with it. And I want to show you some of the uh, things you can do with it. And yesterday, I uh, someone asked in the Bitwig uh, chat about how you can create an 808 uh, kick drum. And you can use the resonator to create um, a kick drum. And what we need is a resonator bank here. And we only need just one, one band. So I take the first one here and I go to C3 and I turn on the key follow or key track. So when we input some MIDI notes, the filter is changing to the right notes, but you have to set it to C3 at an initial initial value to have the correct notes uh, when you switch the keys. And for an 808 sound, I think the synthesis me method for an 808 is pretty simple. You have a an, an sine, sine wave burst, and the sine wave burst is going into a resonator or an and filter and low cut filter with a high resonance. And this gives this special or uh, characteristic sound of an 808 kick. And you can do that just with a sine wave. I think it sounds similar, similar, but it's not the same sound. And what we do now is we create a, a sine wave. And I use usually for that a DC offset device and an LFO. And I choose the the default LFO because you can change it to pitch. So every time we, oh, I need an instrument track here. Let's convert it to instrument track. So I have a MIDI input. And when I use my MIDI input uh, device now, we uh, basically change the LFO speed to the key we are using. Okay. And of course I can use the modulator here to modulate the DC offset device, but that's uh, too loud and too. Just dial it back a bit. So basically this is the sine wave we are generating at the moment. And what we need now is an um, ADSR. So we have an envelope and with this envelope we are changing the amount of the LFO. Okay. So now every time we press a key on the keyboard, we have a sound. And this short sine wave burst um, this, uh, we are using the sine wave burst to uh, go into this resonator bank with just one band activated. And it's completely at uh, set to C3. But with the key track on, it changes the value of the band accordingly to the, to the key we are pressing. And with the mix knob here, you can basically uh, mix between the sine burst and the resonator output. So you can change the attack of the kick drum. If you have mix at zero, you have basically just the attack. So to make this a bit more accessible, we use a chain device, put in the DC offset device in the resonator bank, and we now can um, track this here. I think this should be, no, it's not wired up. And we use another ADSR for the sign bank here, um, uh, for the resonator bank, and just use this and yeah, go maybe here in the reson resonance frequency. So 
so we have more control over the tail of the sound. And we can use a macro to control the mix of the resonator bank. And we can change the sine burst. And maybe let's, let's add at the end one amp device. So we have some kind of um, a soft clip at the end. And maybe find, find some sweet spots for the values. So a uh, pretty simple setup. We create a sine burst, we have a resonator bank for the tail, and we have at the end a soft clip with the amp device to just um, yeah, shorten, shorten the amplitude uh, so we don't clip the, um, the, uh, the fader. So this is one use case for the um, for the resonator bank. Another one is if you um, have a drum loop like this one here. You can use it to make uh, sounds. Um, let's create a resonator bank. And we set everything to, um, let's start at C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, and C8. Let's dial the resonance a bit back here. So we have basically just the note C in different octaves. So um, this can be used to create some kind of um, uh, melody steps or chords just from the drums. So now we can um, use the key track again, which does basically nothing besides uh, pitching everything uh, down to C uh, zero, but um, we can use a chain device here. Um, because the problem is we have now an audio track here, right? So we have no MIDI input and the key track uh, is not working uh, rightly. So um, I'm using an additional instrument track here and we use this as an input for the uh, resonator bank. Note receiver and we use our new instrument track and now we can paint notes on this track here and change the pitch of the resonator bank in the first track. Okay, so let's go with an A minor. Thank you. 
And now we can use uh, some kind of reverb, of course, and a bit of delay at the end. And you can use the mix knob to just uh, mix between the dry signal. So um, this key track here is monophonic, so you can only uh, use it for um, monophonic uh, notes, so you can't lay down chords here. But what you can do is you can uh, change some of the uh, C octaves here to um, yeah chords, major chords or minor chords, but you have to modulate, of course, the frequencies here. So it's not so easy to do, and maybe we get a polyphonic resonator in the future would be nice so we can basically click at this one and change here uh, some voices but for now it's only monophonic but it's a nice trick to create some melodies from drums Yeah, um, this is also a trick with the resonator bank. And of course, um, just delete that and maybe um, uh, record some, some vocals we can use for um, creating some pads. So I have now my voice here and just put this here. Some vocals we can use. So pretty nice. And use the resonator bank and we have no tonality in this because it's just me speaking right so we can use the resonator bank again um, to create a tonality uh, no just just use one band again um, C3 Some vocals we can Some vocals we can use for um, creating some pads Some vocals we can use for um, creating some Maybe use also C4 Some vocals we can Vocals we can use for um, creating some pads. Vocals we can use for um, creating some pads. Vocals we can use for um, creating some pads. Vocals we can use for um, creating some pads. Vocals we can use for um, creating some pads. Vocals we can use a bit of reverb at the end. Vocals we can use for. And now we can use this to um, bounce down everything. And we know this is um, C3. Booklets. And yeah, let's create a sampler. Put this into the sampler and we now have C3 and key track is activated. And maybe use the textures mode here, go down with the speed.
can use some reverb and delay and um, the voice tr uh, voice stack is also pretty nice to create multiple voices so voice one is zero pitch voice two exactly one octave above and stack three is slightly left stack four is right and we change some of the offsets for the playhead so maybe go with this a bit and this a bit more so we have different starting points for each voice I have to activate, of course, voice stacking. As you can see, just with the random input of my voice speaking and a bit of uh, resonator bank uh, applied to bring in some um, uh, fundamentals or harmonies and a bit of reverb and then bounce down into the sampler, you can create pads. And there are so much possibilities, uh, just what you're talking and how you talk it or if you sing into the microphone of, or if you just use some noise or um, some um, yeah crackles or something like that. You can produce a lot of um, in, uh, interesting sounds with the sampler and the resonator. So these are three tips for the resonator. You can build a, a kick drum, 808 kick drum. You can um, basically uh, create sounds or melodies from, from the drums and you can create pads with some random noises. And yeah, pretty nice device and try it out for yourself and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye.